Talk Radio. You're in to all things music. Welcome to Jackie's Groove. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. Serious Latin groove going on there. Hey, everybody, welcome to Jackie's Groove. This is Jackie Bertoni brought to you by the Inner Talk Radio Network. Guys, it's a beautiful Wednesday, hot, hot day in California, Southern Cal. It's March the 8th, and I am proud and privileged. And I've been wanting to interview this gentleman for years. I've known him for years, but now we're really going to get a chance to talk it up and we're going to educate the masses out there. So, and, uh, and make it fun, make it fun, let you walk in his shoes for a couple hours if not uh, experiencing it just uh, on the radio here. So with that said, guys, please welcome with open arms and open ears to my in-studio guest, amazing, amazing percussionist slash drummer, musical director, actor, and Swartz. We'll talk more about that as we get deeper into the conversation. With that said, everybody, welcome Mr. Peter Michael Escobedo III. Peter, welcome, brother. How you doing, man? Great to hear from you. Great to hear from you, brother boy. We got a lot to talk about, man. We got a lot of a lot of help we need to get to our brothers out there, man. And we're going to talk more about that. And uh, we're going to talk about where they can link up to that and so on and so forth. So with that, Peter, let's, let's you know, man, it's right off of the jump off, man. Let's, uh, let's talk it up, man. You were born on July 7th, 1961. Correct me if I'm wrong, in Alameda County, California. That was it. That was it. What a wonderful day that was, huh? That was a blessing. And you know, with uh, Papa Peter and uh, Mama Juanita, man, she they brought in, and there was the there was the lead into another talented Escovito, and uh, along yeah. with your beautiful um, your beautiful sibling Sheila, Juan Zena, my girl on uh, Instagram and uh, and uh, and uh, what is it called Facebook. So we're going to talk more yep. about that also too. Hey, so Peter Michael, for everybody out there that knows you and those who don't know you, let's educate mm-hmm. them for a second itself and kind of share with us, man, if you would. How old were you when you st- uh, first picked up your first set of drumsticks or your first time you ever played bongo or uh, conga and so on and so forth? Go ahead and pick it up from there. Well, I can kind of give you a, a, a just a brief scenario of the Please. of the upbringing even before I started playing. We, we grew up in Oakland, California, in uh, East Oakland, and uh, our house was always full of music. Um, Pops had a band uh, called Azteca uh, mm-hmm, back in the day. And, and we were, I don't know how old I was, six, seven, eight, when that started. So our living room, they used to rehearse in our living room and our living room basically had a 16 piece band, I love it. uh, in that living room five days a week. Uh, and it, so imagine the volume that was coming out of our living room every day. <clears throat> and, uh, Sheila, Juan, and myself, we were always in the back uh, trying to drown out that weird-sounding Latin, whatever it was, uh, right. music by trying to like blast the radio and, and try to learn all our Jackson 5 steps and stuff. So, Of course. You know, basically, it's Oakland, it's funk, it's R&B, uh, we're in the thick of it, and here's this, you know, Latin jazz group every day at my house. So... You know, that was the upbringing. That that was us every day. Um, yeah, and it's funny. Let me jump in here for a second, because when I had an interview last year with Tito Puente Jr., you know, I was shocked to find out, especially coming from that, you know, that gene pool. And the fact that, uh, you know, and Juan, uh, Juan, uh, hello there for Jackie. I just had a brain fart there. I'm back. You know, but uh, <laughs> you know, when you talk about the whole situation with Tito, 
you know, knowing that Tito Jr. was a hard rocker, a punk rock player, he didn't understand Latin music. I mean, especially for the fact that Tito Sr., which blows me out of the water. So, you know, how long did it last that you and your siblings actually were sucked in, drawn into the Latin uh, Afro-Cuban kind of a vibe? Well, I mean, it hasn't stopped. It's an, it's an, music is ever growing. Uh, it's, it's a living, a living, uh, you know, arm of, of, of life, you know, so, <clears throat> you know, th- it's, it's basically exposure and, and, you know, I don't know how Tito was with his son, but how pops was with us. He never asked us to play anything. He never encouraged us before we started playing to start playing. So we were just there. Um, as far as the music experience, um, he allowed us to just observe and, and soak it in. However, we would take that. None of us had planned on being musicians. None of us had planned on playing Latin music. Um, you know, when, when that band wasn't playing, uh, pops was listening to records. He, he listened to, uh, Tito Puente and Eddie Palmieri and Charlie Palmieri and, and right. just all these uh, Latin uh, artists. And he would be just uh, in the room with his stereo uh, and playing to a set of congas. So we'd be in and out. And we kind of learned music by listening and then by watching him. And he learned by listening as well because he was doing the same thing. He was listening to records. We were listening to him. So, um, by the time we started to play, it was really nothing more than, and I, and I remember this day, um, we were in the bedroom and we were like, you know, let's go out and play today. Well, we played basketball yesterday. Well, let's gather all the kids and go play baseball. We had a a ton of kids across the street and down the street. Now we just did that. What do you want to do? All right, let's, let's start a band. All right, whatever. It was nothing more than that. Uh, it was something to do for that day. We looked at each other. What do you want to play? I mean, there's instruments around the house, you know, so you play that, I'll play this. What's that? I don't know. Just sit down and start playing. All right. That's cool. Well, don't play that. You play that. So that was it. We started playing. Um, I think it was about a week or two later, uh, that somebody had hired us to play at this wedding and we went to play this wedding and I made $5. And I was chirping. I was like, you have got to be kidding. Like, all I did was sit here and play these congas, and you gave me five dollars. That might as well have been $500,000. I mean, it was absolutely. It was that yeah, it, much money. Like, wow. And that's like about $3 more than we're making right now on stage, which is even probably more exciting, you know? Well, now it costs money for me to, for me to play. So it's, you there know, you totally go. different. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, you know, from question, that, like, really... It just, it just, you know, kept going. We, uh, and I'm saying we, cause I think all of us kind of took the same path as far right. as we just didn't plan on necessarily being musicians in, in that sense. We, we didn't sit down one day and say, okay, this is what we're going to do for a living. And this is what, so even when we started playing pops always allowed things to be available to us. So there was equipment around. He never said, Hey, that, those are my best drums right there. Don't touch those or, right. you know, don't go by that amp. Uh, he also never said, Hey, I want you to sit down and practice. I want you to go over here and try to learn how to play that. He never, he just allowed us to do whatever, uh, we wanted to do. So we learned in our own way. We learned at our own pace. We learned from R and B and Motown, uh, oh, and all this, all the culture that we had in Oakland and applying that to all this Latin and Latin jazz that was coming out of the house from his bands and it's continued on to this day. And it really has kind of formed, uh, uh, not only our style of playing, but our songwriting. Um, if, if you see Sheila's path, if you see, if you listen to my record, if you listen mm-hmm. to, you know, Juan stuff, it's, it's all a mixture. And that's really kind of, that's the Oakland, you know, if Oakland has a sound, it, it, it definitely is a melting pot of some sorts, but I think it's all rooted in funk. It's all rooted in R&B. And, you know, and the first time uh, um, you talked about earlier when I first started about how long 
I've known you, but the first time I met you, I'm gonna re- actually gonna I'm gonna go back to old school here. It was 1985. It was at the Pacific Amphitheater in Costa Mesa, California, and you were playing with oh, this wow. brother by the name of Lionel Richie. And oh, cool. uh, yeah, and we met, and that's uh, I met you through Carlos Rios. Uh-huh. And and uh and it was probably one of the most amazing shows that we'd ever gone to. In fact, that night backstage in the you know in the makeshift trailer um dressing rooms, if you remember that venue, I'm sure you do. Um yeah. I yeah, remember definitely. um Lionel saying happy birthday to my wife Caprice, uh which was so amazing. And we actually had a great time and I just never forget that night because not only was the music amazing, not only was meeting you was great, you know, part of the Escovito family. Carlos Rios, and I don't know who was on drums at that time, but it's really irrelevant at this point. But all I know is the cool thing was you knew that you guys were definitely in the thick of things because a helicopter came and picked up Lionel from the venue. And I said to myself, okay, now that that's very, very cool. And, and then we <laughs> uh, they actually, right yeah, man, that's legit. And actually he had such a great time with us that Carlos said he wanted, um, he, he actually paid for my wife and myself to go up to Oakland. And you guys were playing at the Oakland Coliseum complex, which was great. And so we had a great time. We all, I don't know if you remember this, but we all went to brunch at the four seasons cliff. And that's when, oh, wow. um, B- yeah, Byron Allen opened up for the, uh, for you guys at that time. So, that's my mm-hmm. history, you know, with you and how, and, and uh, growing up with your music, and you know, and talking about growing up with uh, your music. That little anecdote, and I asked you earlier, and I just kind of want to touch on this. Did you move levitate more towards um, trap set drums, or did percussion, uh, congas timbales? Did that call you more? What was your first? What was your first vibe on that? What did you hit first? Uh, we were definitely playing. Uh, I was definitely playing uh, percussion first. Uh, the drums didn't come till later, and um, if you were to sit behind myself or Sheila and right. watch us play drums, it is a little different. It is definitely a percussionist perspective to a drum set, and you do know you you notice the difference in the look, and you notice the difference in the sound. We are both definitely top heavy, um, so we learn with arms you know, for years mm-hmm. before we learn with feet. So there's different things that we apply. There's different ways that we apply it. Um, neither one of us are schooled and that's kind of the old school way of learning right. as well. Not that everybody was like that, but there were so many more uh, drummers and percussionists that grew up listening to records that we didn't have the technology. We didn't have a, a, even a lot of the schools, even a lot of the access to school. I didn't even know there was a such thing as a music college back then. Right. So, you know, all the ways we learn what it was at a park, it was at Lake Merritt. It was at a gig. I mean, I was 14 years old playing in a nightclub in San Francisco, two nights a week. I was still in junior high school. Crazy. That was, that was my upbringing. I grew up in a, in clubs playing constantly, whether it be with my father's band or sitting there on the side of the stage, watching some people I kind of knew, hoping that they kind of knew me, hoping that they would catch my eye and ask me right. to come up and play a song. And, you know, that all of us did the same thing. We, we were all, and I'm not saying all of us, my brother and my sister, right. all of us that, that were around us. Um, it, it reminds me of the way um, Smokey Robinson describes his growing up uh, in, uh, in Detroit. Share that please. And, uh, and Barry Gordy telling him, you know, go find me some acts. So he would walk around the corner. It wasn't flying to another city. It was Diana Ross lived around the corner. You know, this other person lived around, you know, it was just, right. that's what it was for us. There were so many musicians. We were all playing at the same time. We were all trying to figure it out. We were all throwing on the, you know, the earth, wind and fire records and just, you just did. studying those things, you know? And, and, and again, it's, it's it's rooted in so much R and B, you know, Tower of Power and Sly, and, you know, Carlos Santana was at our house all the time, you know, just playing. And uh, with Azteca, Neil Sean was the guitar player, Terry mm-hmm. Bozio was the drummer. So, you know, it was just a lot, a lot of information uh, that we were getting, probably more through hearing uh, than anything. But yeah, it was. It was a fun, 
uh, very enriching uh, upbringing musically. And uh, I could probably name 30 people that I grew up with that are in the industry right now that, that are doing very well and very successful. And, you know, people, the, the, the public would be amazed. Like, I can't believe you know him too. You know, no, we grew up together. Well, what about yeah, him? Good. He lived up the street. He yeah, it's called used being to live relevant in our garage. Kids. We had so many musicians that used to live in our garage, you know, pops, we had all these people and, you know, they were either, you know, didn't have a place to stay or that, you right. know, whatever. And pops would be like, just sleep in the garage. I don't care. You know, so we were all, that was it. That was it for us. Just tons of music, tons of nightclubs. Uh, and we, we just kept going and, you know, here we are a hundred years later and people look <laughs> and they go, man, I can't believe you did all this stuff. And I can't believe it's, it's, it, that wasn't the goal. The, the, the goal was, you know, how can I sit in with this band tomorrow? That was it. And that turned into the next gig and the next gig and they, they just got bigger. Um, and that, you know, that's pretty much it. You know, and, and, and for those of you who are um, still under a rock, and when uh, Peter mentions the word Sheila, his sister, folks, Sheila E., I mean, we're talking, um, if for those, maybe I'm a fool by even saying that, who, you know, don't know who Sheila is, and the E family, and uh, and groups like the E Train, and I'm a huge fan, and we're going to talk more about that whole longevity, and you know, as we're coming out of the uh, the first minute, Peter, you know, I wanted to ask you a question, we can pick this up on the second segment, but at that younger age, before you actually started playing in a club at the age of 14, when you were watching all of this music going on in your uh, in your house, in your living room and so on, did you, Sheila and Juan, get it? <laughs> That's a good question. How what? How much more time on this segment? Maybe we you know, should this, You know what? No, we're, we're going to wait because I nothing. I'm uh, this one thing I don't do. I, I I try not to ask a question with a ten minute response when I have forty seconds left. So I'm going to go All ahead right. and mark that calendar because I want to talk about that man and and uh, you know and and the cool thing about my show Jackie's Groove is we keep it real and it's a musician talking to musicians. So if we get right. a little too technical out there, people, you know, forgive us because that's just the way we are and the way we were raised. So you guys don't go anywhere, man. We got twenty two seconds left on segment number one. Going into segment number two. Guys, this is Jackie Bertoni, Jackie's Group, brought to you by the Intertalk Radio Network with my dear friend, in-studio guest, Mr. Peter Michael Escobedo III. Do I have to say the third all the time, Peter? Um, but when we hey, come back, how, you, you whatever you want, this five of us, this five Peter There you Michael, go. So. All right, man, we'll talk more about that when we come back. Guys, don't go anywhere. Sit back, have a drink. We'll be right back with these short messages. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Jackie's Groove. 
Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. guys it's smooth there's only thing you can say hey and what's smooth is jackie's groove this is jackie bertoni brought to you by intertalk radio network hey guys that song was brought to you by my in-studio guest the um the ever loving the ever talented multi-percussionist drummer actor uh, my god he's done everything man and we're going to talk more about that as we go on so with that guys welcome back mr peter michael escobedo the third out of five peter welcome back brother <laughs> Thanks, man. It's glad to be here, man. It's a wonderful day in, in Los Angeles. The sun is shining, man. God is good. Yeah, man. We're God is good. You here know, talking and just hanging out. It's, it's, it's a nice day, man. Nice you know, day. Peter, and I, and I don't want to put a somber note on this, man, but, you know, um, Heaven's Band got a little more powerful today, man. I don't know if you knew this, but uh, we lost Dave Valentine today. No, I did not know that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Dave passed away. He, um, you know, he's been suffering and recovering from his stroke and uh it's been all over the internet but um i found out this morning and i said well they, that band in heaven has turned out to be it's it's getting better and better i don't know what's going on there man but uh you know we're, yeah. every day above every day above ground is a good day you know and and while we're on this talk about helping people you know peter is a good friend of my dear friend a group that i started back with in the early um 80s or late 70s early 80s called tower of power that was where I got my break for the first time, and we're talking about one of the greatest drummers to this day, Mr. David Garibaldi, who is recovering um, from a uh, horrible accident uh, that happened a few months ago, a couple months ago, and we're going to talk more about that, and also a substitute bassist for Rocco Prestia, and we also want to send the prayers out to Brother Rocco Prestia, who is in the hospital right now Correct. in Las Vegas with, yeah. with two collapsed lungs. And uh, but he's getting stronger, man. Like I said, God is great. So, you know, but when the fact that matters, we're getting old, guys. We're getting old, and the years of debauchery, unfortunately, sometimes is uh, it, you know is is not paying off. So, with that said, I want to have Peter to talk about real quick. Uh, we talked about raising and helping out brothers. Peter, I'm going to um, let you take over right now, and I want you to share with the listeners worldwide what's going on in your um, your fundraiser and your uh, your charity for uh, Mark VW. I'm going to let you talk about it right now. Go ahead. Well, Mark VW is uh, a bassist who is out of Holland. Uh, he's been with uh, my band, with Pops' band, with Sheila's band, uh, all of us, uh, for over 30 years. Um, he, is, he goes back and forth with Tower as well. He plays bass with them uh, right. a, a lot. And Dave Garibaldi is another, obviously another brother from Oakland that, of course, from the famous uh, Tower of Power band, and we've played with him as well. We've done many gigs and seminars, and um, so you know, a couple months ago, uh, you know, Pops and I were doing a gig in the Bay Area, and we said, "Man, let's go up a day early and just chill out." So we get there, and we're like, you know, we're half a block from the Jack Leonard Square from Yoshi's, and we mm -hmm. said, "Man, we're going to go see Tower of Power because Mark's playing, Dave's playing, uh, Mimi, and all the guys." So all of a sudden we get a call that uh, Mark and Dave got hit by an Amtrak train. And uh, obviously we're shocked, but Pops and I are just getting ready to go to that gig. You know, we're half a block away. So I jump on the phone, start getting information at the same time that we both run out of the hotel. And within, I don't know, 10 minutes of the accident, you know, we're standing right there looking at the train. Um, Mark and Dave had a, the, already been picked up by the ambulance. And so that began uh, just a, a ridiculous change of mindset and everything for the, for the, since then, which has been, you know, a month and a half, just everything right. 
so much stuff in my life has changed and, and altered and shifted. Uh, and mainly because obviously, you know, we care about, uh, uh, uh Mark and Dave and, uh, you know, we want to do whatever we can as well as a lot of other musicians that, and, and friends and everybody else that was so concerned about them. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, the following day, as I'm speaking to his wife, I just told her, you know, look, you know, I know how Mark is and, and, you know, he's going to be worried about all these medical issues and uh, medical bills and financial stuff. Let me at least take on that portion of it. And you deal with the healing of Mark, Um, you know, in in the bigger scope and trying to cut this a little shorter. uh, Dave had constructive surgery on his face and, um, you know, he, he was pretty broken up, but uh, you know, probably about a week later, two weeks later, he was released from the hospital. Mark was a different issue. Mark was in ICU for six and a half weeks. So he had uh, extensive damage uh, in, internally, mainly, um, uh, as well as, you know, his back and all the stuff that was caved in. It was just a, you know, as as we were going through it and all these people were like, man, it's so devastating. I can't believe it. And I, I kept saying, are you kidding Mm -hmm. This is such a blessing and a miracle. Two guys, two guys got hit by a train, not in a car. They were walking. Right. And this train was going 25 miles an hour and hit them head on. They are both alive. Do you understand the blessing that is right now? I mean, it's totally ridiculous that they're both still here, whether it be two days, whether the doctors, I mean, they were like, you know, it's touch and go. Maybe we want, you know what? Right now is go. So he's alive right now. I'm going to stand on that. I'm going to stand on God's word. Uh, of healing. Uh, his wife gave me the, the uh, authority to please pray for him and, and send out, mm. you know, emails for it to, for everybody to pray. And that's what we did. We stood on God's word. We prayed and you know what? It, it's, it's uh, seven and a half weeks later. And as of two weeks ago or something like that, he got released from ICU and went to a recovery, a rehab center. Right. Uh, and then two nights ago, he went home. God is and great, I just, brother. It's, it's just such a blessing. And and in that, and, and I'll just go back to the music side of it, because Please. of the fundraising, he was he had Kaiser, but he went to a trauma center, thank God, right away, because it saved his life. But he was there for like six days. At in that six days, it wasn't covered. So that's what we had to start trying to put a dent in. And right away, I just turned around and booked a gig at Yoshi's. Six days later, we were on mm-hmm. stage with four days uh, uh, prep time. Uh, I threw together, you know, Dave Cause, the E family, Tony Lindsay from uh, Santana, Larry Braggs yes. from Tower of Power. In four days, yes. we sold it out. Uh, and then the next morning, we went into a studio, 25th Street Sound in Oakland, and we recorded a whole CD for Mark. Uh, and uh, Dave Cause was on it. You know, all the people from... Uh, a lot of the people from the night before, we had other musicians coming. We spent one whole day, and we did the whole CD. And, Where can we uh, pick that up? CD is, this CD will be available in digital download as well as physical, uh, physically, and it's uh, through Amazon. It will be through iTunes. The, the, the CD is actually done, finished. I, I have uh, multiple copies, boxes and boxes in my house right now. And they're just going through and setting up all the business part of it. So in about a month and a half, it's going to be available everywhere. And it's a great CD. Uh, man, you can feel love all over every song. I, mean, I had people just donating songs. I wrote a song. Sheila did. Ray Obieto, uh, Dave Cause. We went in. Dave Cause said, man, I got to leave in the morning. So I only have like an hour uh, in the studio in the morning at eight in the morning. I mean, we, we were at two o'clock in the morning the night before we were still at Yoshi's and we, we had wow. to be there at eight in the morning. We get there. I, I said, dude, this song is going to be called hit it and quit it. Cause that's what we're doing. It's incredible. Perfect. Except you haven't heard it yet. Cause we didn't write it. We're just getting ready to write it right now. And in an hour you'll be out of here. So four of us got on instruments. I got on drums, Ray Obieto on guitar, Peter Horvath on keyboards, Dave Cause on saxophone. We wrote a song. He he played the melody. We wrote a bridge, recorded it. An hour later, he was gone and on a plane. And Peter, the whole day from that was like that. Peter, share the title uh, of the uh, the CD if you can. Uh, it's the Mark VW Benefit uh, CD. It's called Raise the Mark is the name of the CD. 
M A R C um, people. M A R C. Yes, M A R C. That's how Mark spells his name. It's called Raise, Raise the Mark. And again, Larry Braggs from from uh, Towers on it. Tony Lindsay, Ray Oviedo, Peter Horvath, Dave Cos, Mark Russo from the Yellow Jackets. Of course. Uh, just a just a whole bunch of artists. Uh, John Santos. A lot of Bay Area artists came in. Phil Hawkins. Uh, and they came in. You know, we we we'd be sitting there, and you know. People just come out of the woodwork. Hey, man, I'm here for an hour. Cool. Let's let's do a song. Go in the studio. We'll record it right now. It. Let's go. And so it was a it was a wonderful thing. Um, just so you know, I spoke. I spoke to David yesterday. By the way, um, Garibaldi I spoke to David uh, about noon. Told him that Caprice and I were sending our daily prayers, and uh, he says, "Brother, he goes, I appreciate it. He goes, I'm getting stronger, and it's only a matter of time before uh, he's back up on the throne itself." I want to put a, a special shout out to Mr. Herman Matthews, who is filling in the shoes with Mr. Garibaldi on tour right now. And, you know, and, and I want to step back for one quick second because I don't want to neglect you, Peter Michael. Those last two songs that we heard on the uh, startup on each segment, the last song, I, I'm really filling it. Do you want to tell the audience real quick um, what that genesis of that tune was all about and where they can pick that up? Well, uh, this CD I did, uh, I did a while back ago. You can get it on iTunes. It's called Moments. And, and basically, you know, people have asked me because there's a lot of word, spiritual word on that record. And they asked me mm-hmm. if it was a Christian record. And I told them, no, it, it's a record about my life and what I go through and what I believe in and the whole thing. It's not a Christian record. It's a, to me, it's a good record. And, and it's a, it's a record that uh, lyrically has a lot of, uh, a lot of scripture in it. Uh, it has a lot of, there's political uh, pieces in there, there's stuff about love. It's, and that's why I called it moments. It's moments of this moments of that. And so, you know, um, it was a really, a, a CD that when I did it, I, I really, I love Chardé. So mm-hmm. to me, her kind of records are the kind of records that you could put on and just leave the whole thing on. Cause they're all groove based. That's what I wanted to do. And I made a groove based record that you could put on and everything has got a little bit of a hump on it. Again, it's Oakland. It's Oakland, y'all. So it's going to be hey. rooted in funk. But um, you know, but there's a lot of different flavors. There's Latin. There's Latin jazz. There's funk. There's pop. You know. So did you um, employ the Escobedo clan on this album? Oh yeah. Um, I think. Let me see. Actually, let me think about that. <laughs> I have to go back and remember. Actually, I remember Pops specifically saying on stage that I didn't hire him for that record. So. And I always respond by, you charge too much money. So that was an easy out for me. You know, and, and, and Peter, I wanted, I, I, was, I was with your sister, um, Sheila, on August 25th. We had a big uh, uh, well-to-do over at uh, Center Staging with LP and the LP Traffic Jam. And, um, yeah, and so Sheila and I had a chance to hang out and play. And I talked to Dad, um, Pops, and uh, we started talking to Sheila. And her and I were outside talking. And she said, you know, I really, really enjoyed your interview, um, which I didn't even know she'd even listen to the show, um, with uh, Alfredo Reyes Sr. and mm-hmm. Danny Reyes, Danny De Los Reyes, and, uh, of course, Wally Sen- uh, Jr. had said to me, hey, brother, would you do us a favor? And I said, sure. And he goes, would you interview our father? Because when dad's gone, so go the stories. And so right. I can't really say it's all my idea. Maybe it's a good part of your sister, too. But I would love, I'm going to put the olives, extended olive branch, I would love to interview Pops. Because the fact of the uh, matter is, and again, you know, when, when Pops is gone, there goes the stories. Right. You know, and, well, he, and he's not going anytime soon. Number one, for, for uh, Walfredo to ask as a favor, that's a weird thing because it's, Absolutely. A, it, it's a, a pleasure and an honor to be able a to given, talk given. to Walfredo Reyes Sr. I mean, that guy, you talk about somebody who, uh, you know, however, whatever age he he has been, he has been studying. He, he'll be, mm-hmm. you know, 66 years old and you're like, Hey man, how you doing? Oh man. Good man. I learned this new thing. Let me show you. And, and it's like, you look at him, you go, are you kidding? You know how much stuff you already know? Like, why are you still trying to learn stuff? That's how he is. He's, he's that guy. And he has so much history as well as pops. Um, Walfredo yes. and I have talked numerous times about trying to get both families together to do something, to do a documentary, to do a video or something. We are, we are children of these legendary percussionists uh, who have just had so much history. And then, and then now the children have a lot of history as well. So 
we just thought, man, we got to do something. We got to do something. And we've been talking about it for years and we really, really need to do it. But, uh, you know, yeah, definitely the Reyes family, they're an incredible family. We love them very much. And they're, mm-hmm. you know, we're a part of their family. They're a part of ours. So would you, uh, yeah, uh, you would, definitely would you th- need to get that interview. Yeah. Throw, throw the vibe to dad, please, for me. And uh, I'll do a oh, special thing because, uh, you know, every time we hang out, we get a chance to talk and I, Hell, I'd love to have your. I'd love to have Juanita, your mother, on there too, because her and I we get together at Nam. We talk more than your father and I do. So, uh, right. You know, well, the a only problem also. is you only have a two-hour show, so so it's probably not you gonna dig. Happen. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. You know, we can extend it. We can bring it back. Also, <laughs> you know that is so cool, man. Because you know, we're again, we're all about helping our brothers out there. Again, we're you know we're not we're all, we're all becoming a little bit long in the tooth for the lack of a better. Um, explanation, but the fact is, we're doing it now, man. And we, and regardless of what stature and what status you are in the industry, we are all are simply just hired grunts looking for our next gig, regardless of you know what that gig is. And so, we, you know, we always got to put the, we got to put that best foot forward because you know, Carl Parasso, your friend, my friend, the team ballet um, player from Santana, he always used this joke, and I have always stolen it from him. He said, you know, he grew up playing with Santana, and he goes until the needle broke. And, you know, and that's the right. same situation because, you know, I'm a self-taught player. Um, I don't read a stitch of music. But the fact of the matter is when you when you when you lack that ability to read, it seems like another sense comes into your body like a blind man that doesn't have sight. Something else is brought forward. So I think that all kind of gives us that vibe and that little extra benefit out there. And, and to be a, a chameleon for the uh, for different sorts itself and to play all different types of music in which. Peter Michael does, and that's the cool vibe about that. And we're going to get deeper in to uh, Peter's influences, uh, who has influenced Peter, um, who Peter's influenced, and uh, the audience wants to hear that out there. And then we're going to talk about food, comida, you know, stuff that you know that feeds our soul, and uh, and et cetera, et cetera. So with that said, I'm going to come back. I'm uh, on this third segment, ending up segment number two. I'm going to brag about Peter when we come back because this man's got a, a bio. I thought mine was crazy. Please. Uh, mine's a pamphlet next to a uh, war and peace. So with that said, guys, I want everybody to sit back, relax. You know what? And if you're out there listening, call some friends. Go online on social media and tell them to tune in right now itself because they don't want to miss what's coming up. So with that said, guys, this is Jackie Bertoni. Jackie's Groove brought to you by Intertalk Radio Network, the leader in music business. And guys, I'm just so proud and privileged to have on my show today in studio, Mr. Peter Michael Escovito the Third. So don't go anywhere. Sit back, have a little drink of water, and we'll be back back after the short message. Don't go anywhere. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on InterTalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing, and it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio, to sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Welcome to Jackie's 
Groove. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. Right, kids. Now that is a melding of funk, Afro Cuban, Latin, and it's got everything in the backbeat and what we call the food for thought in Latin music called the clave. And once you have the clave in your soul, man, there's nothing you can't play or nothing you can't bring around that. And and that clave, that groove, that funk, that soul is brought to you with my in studio guest today. His name is Mr. Peter Michael Escobedo the third. Peter, before we get going, man, you guys do me a favor, do us a favor, do yourselves a favor. Go on to iTunes or go on to Google Play and download our easy-to-use and navigate application called InterTalk Radio. First word, InterTalk. Second, radio. You can download it. It's free. It's easy to use. And you can take Jackie's Groove and our plethora of shows with you on the go when you can't listen live. And, and speaking of live, Peter Michael, that last song, man. I mean, if you guys weren't bobbing your head to that, man, then, you know, I don't know what to tell you because that was some serious funk and groove going on there. Peter, talk about that song if you would. Um, that song, uh, is basically, it's, it's a love song. It's about somebody who makes a mistake in someone's life and they're like, you know, it's mm-hmm. called, that's the way it goes. And it's one time we all make mistakes, two times, how many does it take? Three times everybody knows. Oh, well, that's the way it goes. So you make a mistake. It's okay. But you know, you repeat it. It might be time to, to move on. So album, kind of the, what, could, what album is that off of? That's on the Moments CD. Of, Perfect. Uh, and, and it's on iTunes, available on iTunes. Hey, you know, uh, and you, know, you mentioned the, you know, the Afro funk and the Afro Cuban and the funk and, mm-hmm. and, and all the, you know, uh, divert diversity that's in within a lot of the songs that I do. And it's really a lot of people on, you know, they're, they're aware that pops is uh, Mexican, Mexican, Indian, Indian. And uh, mm-hmm. they don't know that my mother is Creole. So she's from her family's from Louisiana. So, you know, not only do we have the R and B from the from the Oakland side, you know, we right. got a lot of stuff going on uh, from Louisiana and from that that side of the of of our culture. So, you you're know, it's from really the, just yeah, you're going from the Nola. You're going from the Nola to the Oakland Stroke. I mean, there's a you know that that melding of music, man, is live. You know, and I, I just want to speaking of Oakland Stroke, can, can we just finish what we talked about? Because I want to give props to. Uh, Mark VW and so on. Uh, tell the audience about the uh, the other benefit coming up soon. We have our second benefit coming up in Vallejo, California, at the Empress Theater, and it's March 30th. And uh, this is going to be a great show. Again, all the proceeds go to the Mark VW uh, Benefit Fund uh, to handle his uh, medical bills. But uh, it's uh, featuring Howard Hewitt, Evelyn Champagne King, Confunction, and Tony Lindsay of Santana, uh, hosted mm-hmm. by Sterling James of KBLX and myself. It's going to be a great night. It's going to be fun, man. We're just doing some all some old school soul. All the songs we've sung to and listened to uh, all those years, we're going to try to touch on as much of that as possible. So it's going to be a fun night. You guys, and, and definitely go back onto Facebook and um, Peter Michael Escovito, and he's got those links there. I want you to check it out because the talent there is ridiculous. And, um, you know, what he said mentioned before the last show was um, – they had a Yoshi's with uh, my dear dear brother Larry Braggs, formerly from Tower Power, now with the Temptations. Tony Lindsay, formerly of Tower, excuse me, of Santana for twenty four years. Um, mm-hmm. This is when you're going to get a chance to see the guys stepping out of their own. I don't know if you want to call the world comfort zone, but getting back into the you know into the uh, the old school way of doing music. And uh, you definitely want to check out the situation. And also, Peter, you have a GoFundMe page for Mark VW also. Um, the, the numbers are growing and it, it, it can't stop right now because he's got a goal he wants to meet. And so we're going to try through our worldwide, uh, reach of an audience. Um, Peter, tell him that, uh, 
the website on, on GoFundMe slash and uh, the name to find it under. Yes, it's GoFundMe.com slash Tower of Power members. And that's how you can get to uh, to Mark VW's GoFundMe page. And, you know, you can look at those numbers and you think, wow, that's a lot of money. You know, they've already raised 77000 That's incredible. Mm-hmm. It is. It's a blessing. Every dime, every, you know, I look at people, some people are donating $5 and that's so cool. You know, it, Absolutely. It, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, the price. And at the same time, you know, uh, I, those bills could be, you know, 20 to $80,000 a day. We just don't know. They're still coming in. So as much as, you know, you can look at the number and go, well, they're doing pretty good. Maybe I won't, you know, we're, no. believe me, we're putting a dent in it. So trust me. And your sister uh, um, had said something a while back when this first started, she said, you know, I have close to 500,000 followers on Facebook. If each one of you put a simple dollar towards this um you know and guys please you know it's one less day at starbucks put your best foot forward and help out some brothers man because that's what it's all about so now that i've instilled peter's instilled a little bit of guilt uh let's get back to the uh the matters at hand man we all of a sudden we went from latin to italian to uh uh jewish um uh, jewish managers here so what that says uh let's get back you know and peter i want to ask you a question brother you know, think about this for a second. You know, we talked about the family upbringing and, and how the living room was basically a rehearsal studio and so on with the likes of Carlos Santana and uh, and the like itself. Let's go back for a second with all the people that you and the Escovito family has influenced. Who has influenced Peter Michael growing up and today? Um. I don't – it's weird because I th- there's not – that many people that I can say specifically because there's so much music that we listen to. And, and you know, you'll, you'll agree to this, that when we grew up, there was no such thing as R and B radio. There wasn't pop Mm -mm. radio. It was called Mm -mm. radio. You turn the radio on Marvin Gaye, the Beatles, uh, journey, uh, a funk band, you know, it was just, it was everything there. It wasn't isolated. So when we listened to music, we listened to music. It was all music. And it didn't get isolated till later. So, you know, it, I will definitely always say that Stevie Wonder is an influence. Right. I will always say that Earth, Wind & Fire was an influence. So, you know, if I had to pick a couple, it, it's definitely going to lean towards those two things. Those are, those are records that, you know, I've studied. I mean, and, and I, I always say we, because it was such a big group of us that kind of did the same thing. Absolutely. So. Um, you know, all that music that, you know, we grew up in, in Oakland and listened to some of it, we listened to cause we were in the thick of it, mm-hmm. uh, and others because, uh, you know, it, it was just, it was that culture. It was that R and B funk culture. And again, I didn't get, you know, my, my father, again, he's Mexican Indian. We didn't get that culture in our house at all because again, my mother's not. Although he spoke Spanish, he's really from Pittsburgh, California. So right. he never spoke it around the house. I didn't, know, I didn't even know what a Mexican was. You know, I, I didn't, it just had nothing to do with me until I would go to a couple relatives house. Then I would kind right. of see a little bit of culture there. But for us, we just really didn't have any of it. So our, you know, we sang in Spanish all the time because when we started working in Pops's band, that's what he sang. So we would sing, and we to this day we sing all this stuff in Spanish. We have no idea what we're talking about. So, but that's okay though, man. Know, Fake it, it till you understand it, man. That's the, you know, and that, and that is so cool back because you know, think about it. And I'm not bragging by any stretch here. Maybe I am, but the fact of the matter is, you know, you and I we've been blessed in this industry of working with the who's who of players and so on. But think about it for a second, Michael. You know, uh, Peter, isn't it kind of cool of all the people that we know that are famous you turn the radio on and we know who's in that band you know we've been in the business long enough to know that and and it's in space we get some of the greatest seats and perks being in this industry but i gotta tell you being you know being i i don't even the cool thing about being in this industry i can't tell you how many times i didn't have a seat in the audience where we spent most of the show on the wings on the side of the stage which is just fine with me to see the inner mechanics and how things work and with that said you know we've got friends of ours mutual friends we talked about wilfredo reyes jr who's been on the the chair of percussion for Chicago for the past six years, who just celebrated 50 years. Speaking of Tower Power, Tower is going on 50 years next right. year, which blows me out of the water. And 
a great book, and they and they've already got twenty eight songs in the can right now, and they're just Mimi's trying to figure out what songs are going to put on this uh, on this release. And you know, and with that said, you know, what's the last show? What's the last big show Peter Michael attended? Um, was it a friend or was it just a stranger of a group you wanted to see? Share with us. Ah, uh, shoot, I I don't even. I mean, it would probably have to be at a at a nightclub. Uh, as far as big acts, um, I'm never in a stadium unless I'm on stage. Uh, and it's not that I don't want to go. It's not that I wouldn't enjoy right. it. It has nothing to do with that. It's just, it, it's my job. So it, if, uh, if I'm not working, it, it kind of doesn't make sense for me to go to a place then where I work. You it's dig? like, you know getting off at Starbucks and then you just hang out there every day. And on your days off, you go sit and, you know, it just, you know, you can stop in or whatever, but it just kind of doesn't, you know, cool. doesn't really do that much for me. But in nightclubs, uh, there are times where I'll go see, uh, you know, groups play or, um, and again, in many cases, I, I almost have to be there for a reason. So as much as I enjoy music, uh, this industry is very different right now. Um, mm-hmm. On the main stage, on the bigger stages, you can always go see, uh, you know, artists at the Staples Center. And I mean, you know, right. the big stadiums are always busy. The smaller clubs, a lot of them have gone away from the way I grew up. You know, we grew Absolutely. up, just, there was tons of music and, and places to play, places to go listen to bands. There's not as much anymore. Uh, and then when there are, it's kind of hard because, um, you know, a lot of people don't get paid a lot of money to do it. So they don't do it that often. Yeah. All the musicians I know that play, I'm in Los Angeles. So all the musicians I know that play in a nightclub out here, you know, 99% of it aren't doing it for the money. Um, they're doing it to play and you know, there's not a lot of places. So, you know, when there's opportunity, Hey, let's go do this gig. You really don't make any money, but you could do, you know, fine, let's go, let's play. You know, they want to, they want to just be in the thick of it and be creative and, right. uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I love music. I just get it in different formats now, like everybody else. Um, so, you know, I'm on iTunes a lot. I'm on, uh, uh, you know, YouTube and, and right. checking out groups there and, you know, doing a lot of stuff online. So the same way we, we record now, a lot of times we record from our own homes, which is mm-hmm. great because we have the technology and the access uh, not as great on the creative side because you're not bouncing off of right. two, you know ten and twelve other people, which was a blessing and and so cool and so refreshing. Right. When we back to the Mark CD when we when we did that a couple weeks ago, all this creativity that was in that room, and you just forget that man, this is how we grew up. You know, we mm-hmm. did all those confunction records and all those records we did. You know, the whole band in the in the studio. You know, together and you know, you forget about that till you get back to it and you go, man, I remember we used to do the same with the E train. You know, we, we would go in as a group and, and just, you know, record the whole record on the spot, which is, it's a great way to work. You know, you just bounce in creativity off of everybody and you don't think that you have to do everything yourself. Okay. Right. I played the keyboard. Now let me figure out the bass line. Now let me get some horn stabs in here. Okay. What's the melody? What's the lyrics going to be? This is how we work today. We, we have to do, all of it ourselves in most cases. Yeah, you know, uh, and, and, and so, you, talk, you know, talking about some old school stuff back. You know, my wife and I were in Vegas last year. Um, probably, I think it was latter part of July or first part of June, whatever. But we got a chance to go hang out with Jonathan Sugarfoot Moffat, and Jonathan was playing with his original band called Cameo. Word up! And let me just tell you, man. I mean, we went and saw him in a small place at the Westgate Hotel, and probably maybe about two hundred fifty people in this audience, but an audience that was like like an audience that felt like was a hundred thousand people and Larry Blackman and the crew are still killing it, man. I mean, they're still killing it. And that's the situation where kids out there, listen to what I have to say, man, it's all about being and staying relevant in this industry. You know, everything old is new again and the lack of music business or, you know, whatever, we'll talk more about that itself because we've been in it long enough. And I just kind of want your opinion on this, but we're talking about music, but I want to ask a question to you, Peter, think about this for a second. If you didn't have music in your life, what do you think Peter Michael would be doing right now? Um, I would be, well, I kind of am doing it right now, which is directing. 
um, and creating uh, TV shows and films. So I have moved into another direction, but not moved out of music. Do you see what I just did, brother? Yep. I, 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 that was called I, a segue, kids. There you go. I, and, I see uh, how that works. And I, and I want to talk more about it because, again, I, I want to go into that next facet itself. And, again, we got two and a half minutes here, and I don't want to um, uh, choke you on that. So I want to talk more about uh, the inner mechanics of Peter Michael Escobedo and, uh, you know, and what he's doing to stay relevant and what he's done all these years to stay relevant and, uh, you know, and, and, and doing things for the greater good. And, uh, and I, I want to ask you another question, if I may do so. You know, uh, if you weren't playing percussion or drums or keys, what instrument would draw you right now? If you could play anything else right now and play it masterfully like you do right now, what would instrument be? Um, I don't think there's another instrument necessarily. I think if I wasn't playing uh, drums and, and keys and percussion, I'd probably be singing more. I would probably be uh, utilizing my vocals more and and perfecting that better. I do sing. I sing lead on my own records and stuff, but you know, it, it's almost master of none. I do a lot of things. I have a lot of different things that I'm involved in. Uh, I play all kind of different instruments. I sing, I write, uh, I create, I do all this stuff, but, but it's all to me, right. none, none is mastered because I haven't, it's, there's no time to put in for one thing. So I think if I weren't playing, I'd be focusing more on vocals and singing. You know, and, and in the last minute itself, how old were you or, or have you even figured it out yet? that you realize the fact that you have an amazing voice. Um, are you still working on it? Or are you happy where you're at with that voice? I, I think like anything else, I'm always working on it. I don't, I don't think there's one thing I've ever done in my life where I think, okay, uh, I'm the best I could be at that. Uh, I just, you know, at, at some level I'm a perfectionist and, you know, I'm just always striving to be better in everything that I do in life and in the music. So. Yeah, it's a perfect you know situation because the bottom line is you know you you wake up. There's a certain time in life when school's out, but there's also a certain time in life you have to realize the fact that you never stop learning until the day that you stop breathing, and then that's another right. that's another step forward. So, you guys, with that said, can you believe it? We're almost done with the first hour out of a two-hour interview. Segment number three coming to a close. Segment number four right around the corner with my in-studio guest, legendary drummer, percussionist, vocalist. Uh, man about town, Mr. Peter Michael Escobedo the third. Hey guys, Jackie Bertoni, Jackie's Groove, brought to you by Intertalk Radio Network. You guys coming up on segment number four. Don't go, man. We haven't even scratched the surface yet. So with that said, I'm going to use the boys' room. I'll be right back, and uh, you should do the same. Peter, stay tuned. We'll be right back on segment number four. Don't go anywhere, kids. Bye-bye. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to timdolbear.com and check out our free one-song mix offer. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, 
shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Enter Talk Radio. You're in to all things music. Jackie's Groove. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. Guys have said it more than one time, but that right there, my friends, is called the groove. A groove so deep, you've got to get a ladder to climb out of it, man. And that groove is brought to you by my in-studio guests. Go ahead and laugh along with me, brother. Peter Michael Escobedo the third. Hey, Peter, I want to tell you something, man. We on break, we talked about this, but I do want to come back, and I uh, will come right back to that. But guys, you know what? Because of the success of Jackie's groove, we knew it was going to be successful. But we had no idea the magnitude that it's hit, and it's because of guests like I have on today, Peter Michael Escobedo the third. And uh, the thing about this, it's like the bumper music that you hear coming in uh, to my segments. That is my dear friend of mine. And I'm sure, Peter, if you don't know her, maybe you do, but it's my dear friend of mine, Talia Trigueto. She's the on-air voice personality of 947, The Wave, and also the Academy Awards, the Golden Globes, and uh, the Grammy. So, Talia, I love you, girl. Thank you for putting your best foot forward and making Jackie's groove just that slick. And talking about slick and, you know, talking about word up, Peter, you know, we talked on the break about, I mentioned the fact of Cameo. You mentioned the fact of Confunction and and all Mm -hmm. those funk groups itself. Tell the audience what you and I talked about and uh, your feeling about the whole situation. Well, I think what we were talking about was you had mentioned you saw Cameo not that long ago, and it it was a couple hundred people in the audience, and and it was just, you know, they were people in the audience were going crazy. And really, the thing is, that's another lost art, and I think what Mm -hmm. people don't, understand or, or, or they kind of forget is, you know, the, the, the music back in the day, people grew up entertaining. They grew up in, we grew up in nightclubs knowing because of failure most of the time, how do we sit there and get the audience in the palm of our hand? How do we do, we lost it tonight. How do we do it the next night? What can we do to make this better? How do we entertain them in a way that's going to build? How do we climax the show? How do we, mm-hmm. as a band, as a unit, visually entertain as well as solos as well? How do you build a solo? All that kind of stuff that you do creatively within a band and we, within you know, the, the failures half the time of being in front of people, again, because the, the nightclubs and a lot of the places to perform are not there anymore, people are now in their bedroom, just videotaping themselves on guitar and they sing great and they sound great. And that's a great thing. But at the same time, the entertainment value and what you would learn how to do, Larry Blackman can get you in the palm of his hand in, in 30 seconds. It's going to happen. Confunction, cool in the gang, uh, the gap band, all those guys, they spent so many years. That's what we did. We just, you know, I used to play, we used to do tours with Confunction where the Barquets, uh, um, Cameo, Commodores, all these bands were touring together. So the whole, the whole um, goal was to outplay the, the band that was going on before us. So that was right. between pyro, between jumping off of amps. Everything we would do was, was based around entertainment. And so, you know, for you to say uh, you saw... Uh, uh, cameo and it was incredible. Well, well, it it should have been. And you know, I've seen that time and time. You can go see Confunction right now. They're touring all over the world. And my boy they Dale Edwards in, singing incredible. with him right now too. You know Dale, don't you? I'm sorry. You know I'm Dale sorry? Edward. 
Dale Edwards oh, yeah. playing per, uh, percussion and uh, vocals yeah. with him. Yeah. So it's very yep. cool. And, and, you know, and Peter, I want to jump in real quick, too, and I want to ask you, because I would never ask this question because I wouldn't have the balls to do so. But um, one of our listeners um, has just messaged me, and I think it's a fair question. Um, it would make sense because we all have siblings in this industry, and we've all been successful to a certain level. But this, the fact of the matter is your sister killed it and is killing it to this day. Yes. With that said, the listener wants to know something. And again, they said, apologize for the blatancy. But is there any envy between Peter Michael Escovito and Sheila Escovito? For her uh, yeah. massive I success. I hate her guts, basically. There you go, kids. There you go. Um, yeah, right. Is there anything else you want to know about her? I'm just kidding. Um, no, man. I- no, she, uh, I would say, and it would be, to me, it would be past Sheila. It would be with my father, with my sister, with my brother Juan, right. we've played together for a long time. And there is a competitiveness that goes on on stage and sometimes off stage, but mostly on that we have. And I think we all thrive on that. I think it's a very positive thing. And I think the second, it's almost like wolves. The second we see one of them's weak, we jump all over it. And then it makes them sit up straight. Oh, really? Oh, we're going there? Okay, then I got this for you. Oh, really? Then I'll do this. I mean, and by the end of the show, I think we pump each other up so much. We're just going crazy. We can't breathe by the time we're done with a song, you know, and and we'll get off stage and Pops is like, why'd you guys do that? I was, I was chilling, just trying to get this. Nobody told you you had to take that solo. Yeah, but I, I couldn't just sit there after you did that. Well then, Hey, then bring it, you know? So there is that competition with siblings as well as with my father. But I think it's a great thing. Um, I think we are all extremely uh, thankful of each other, proud mm-hmm. of each other's accomplishments. Um, I think we support each other very, very well. And, and we're just so glad uh, that we're all still in the industry and working and doing great stuff. But competition, definitely, uh, you know, do I ever wish I was you know, as successful as Sheila or have done the things that pops have done. Never, 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 never. I I am where I'm supposed to be. God has me exactly where he wants me today. And I'm, I'm thankful that Sheila's done all that she's done and she's done a great job and she's earned it. One of the best things that Sheila does is on stage. She does it very well. She works her butt off. She puts in tons and tons of time. And she's always, always uh, working. And it shows. You can go on stage. You can go see her play right now. And you're like, man, that show was incredible. She, she's working her butt off to this day. Yeah, and she's Same always smiling, Pop. man. Yeah, she's always smiling. Because yep. every time I've seen her, in fact, one of my dear friends and your friend, Eddie Menefield, um, Eddie's been with your sister you know, uh, for years. Great, great yes. sax player. Great, great interview also. Um, you guys can go check that out. You can also check out most everything itself. You can check out Larry Braggs and also Tony Lindsay. I've had I've had them all, man, and it's only going to get better. And I think that was a very fair question, uh, question uh, Peter, from the listener right. itself. I mean, I'm curious, like my sister, Marjean, who's two years older than me, you know, um, her friends are always in awe, for the lack of a better word, about, hey, your brother's done this, your brother's done that. But, you know, the bottom line is, yeah, my sister's very thankful. She's very, very proud of her brother, but I'm still her brother. She says, honey, I love you, but I used to change your diapers. So, you know, right. it's like, you know, I, I'm, you know, you know, save it for that. And when I come home too, and I've spent the day with Al Jarreau or Michael McDonald or the Earthman and Fire, when I come home, I'm still higher than, you know, higher than high could be just on that vibe of music. But the thing is, you know, I become Jackie Bertoni to my wife, you know, it does, I'm right. like, she's not impressed, you know, and that's the right. cool thing about it. And I think when you lose that situation and realize the fact that we um, put our pat legs on one at a time and we all poop for the lack of a better word. We're no right. different than anybody else. And, and and for the young kids out there, when they say it over and over again, how do you stay so cool and how do you stay so humble? Well, I wasn't always humble and I wasn't always cool. But in my later years, I've developed that, man, because you know why? The people that you and I hang out with, the big stars, they don't have an attitude. So why in God's name would we have an attitude? Just being thankful. Right. That, you know, that's the bottom line. And speaking of being thankful, Peter, you know what? I'm looking at this, brother. You know, I don't, I try not, I I stay away from Wikipedia because they screwed me up more times than they were good. So I do want to, I do want to say this, man. I mean, talk about just being blessed. Let's just kind of go over. Let me just brag for a second. Okay. Justin Timberlake, Lionel Richie, Barbara Streisand, Barbara. Um, We're looking at, uh, 
you know, uh, Mariah Carey, Kenny G, Patti LaBelle, Tina Turner, Luther Vandross, and even working with a dear friend, man, a great, great comedian, Mr. Wayne Brady. Now, with all those names, which is basically a speck of all the things that you've done, I'm going to put you on the spot for a second. If you had to choose, and this is going to be really a crappy question to ask, but I want to find out myself, and you know where I'm going on this. If you had to choose out of the people I just mentioned right now, maybe the people I didn't even mention, who has Peter Michael enjoyed playing with the most outside of the family? Who makes you Um, smile when you think about the gig? I, a lot of people have asked me that, and obviously there's different answers for different reasons. But in general, when mm-hmm. we, when I was playing with Lionel, and uh, it, it, you know, I played with him for 15 years, but starting right. in '85, he's uh, he's a very smart guy in the sense that he surrounds himself with a great band, and he allows that band the, the opportunity to do whatever they want to do as long as it works. So within that camp that we had, I really enjoyed that because I had the freedom to do a lot of stuff. We did a lot of singing together. I would sing with him. We'd go to the front right. of the stage. We'd do songs. We'd, I'd go in the back play. I'd run around. We'd do these dance things. I was dancing on the ceiling. I was flying on wires. Mm-hmm. Uh, we would go into an, another tour and he would basically say, what do you guys want to do? Well, what are you talking about? I don't know. Let's just create something. Well, I want to, I want to fly from the thing and try to land. Okay. So let, how do we do that? I mean, it right. wasn't, it wasn't like, dude, this isn't your gig. This is, I'm Lionel Richie. Like stay back there. No, he wanted everybody involved. He wanted everybody to do and be the best that they could be on stage. So I would have to say, as far as sharing the stage and being comfortable and smart enough, wise mm-hmm. enough to understand uh, that if, if he shared the stage, it's only going to make him look better. Right. Um, he would stand there and sing all night long. And he had these, all these break dancers around him when right. break dancing was kind of first, you know, popular, um, in, in that medium, but people would leave the stadium and go, Oh man, did you see that? That was so cool. And Lionel was break dancing and, you know, doing all Lionel wasn't break dancing, but he surrounded himself with people that were doing that. And it just made him, it, it was, man, that show was great. Then Lionel's percussionist and it was Lionel's this and Lionel's that he, he understood that. I'm a, if I just let everybody just express themselves and be creative and be the best they can be, we're all going to thrive, you know? So, um, I would have to say that that was, that was a great experience. That was probably the, the, one of the biggest tours that I had done at the beginning of my career. The first big tour was Confunction. I did, I was with them for about four or five years. And then after that Lionel, sorry, after that Marvin Gaye and then Lionel. So, you know, that was kind of at the height of Lionel. So I, I would say that that would be my favorite, uh, touring experience. You know, and, and I asked that question because I have recently watched, in fact, I'm kind of, kind of brag here and put the cart in front of the horse, but I've been speaking to, um, Kara Hutchinson, uh, she's Lionel's PR girl, and it looks like we may have our little grips on Mr. Ritchie, too. So I'm really, really excited about that because I'm a huge fan, especially since I've had the opportunity to hang out with him. And the cool thing about that, Peter, you know, knowing about being behind it with Carlos Rios, your friend, my dear friend, over the years, when we were at Carlos's house, and I think you remember we were sitting there, Carlos and I and my wife pulled up in his little blue Porsche 911. I don't know if you remember that car going yep, all the way I back. I sure do. And so the cool thing about that, we, we go into the house, and uh, Carlos' his mom and dad, I mean, he picks up the uh, the answer machine, and on the answer machine is his father saying, I just called to say I loved you. <laughs> and and I'm sitting there, and I'm just like, wow. And then we go into uh, Carlos's little studio, and he pops a thing called a cassette into a cassette mm-hmm. player. And it's a gentleman by the name of Mr. Lionel Richie, and he didn't realize the fact that Lionel really, really wasn't a big writer. And when Lionel would uh, when Lionel would write a song, he basically hummed out the the uh, the notes, and uh, and that's what Ed, uh, Carlos had shared with us. And we heard the original humming of Lionel Richie's voice on a song called "All Night Long," which was, I mean, come on, that's history, man. I heard that song, which was already a hit on the radio, but the genesis right. of that song, and then the song that Carlos wrote with Lionel called "Dancing on the Ceiling." You just made that up. You know, mentioned that a little while ago. And I bring Correct. this thing up about the, the coolness about uh, Lionel. Lionel, and I, and I shared this with Al Jerome. Al was like screaming with laughter, ear to ear smile. 
And I always ask an artist, you know, uh, the artist itself, the name on the billboard, on the marquee, is there a song that you no longer, if you didn't play it again, would you, would you miss it? And, uh, and most everybody says no, because those songs made us where we are today. But Lionel Richie said at one of an interview, it was on Piers Morgan, and Lionel says, I never get sick of playing the same song um, one time or a million times because it's not the same song. When you look out in the audience and you see the reaction of the faces of the listeners, that makes the song a new song. And, you know, <laughs> and, and he was talking about the fact like on All Night Long, I won't, I won't even go near where the words, but when he does that, hey, jumbo, jumbo, you know, and, right. and, and he was asked about the words. He had asked uh, uh, somebody in the Marley family what Bob Marley was talking about when he would say, you know, you know, and he would say that. He goes, what does that mean? And he goes, actually, it means nothing. Bob is just up there throwing out words. And so with that right. said, and you'll realize this, is that that's, that line in all night long means nothing. <laughs> means nothing. And do you, do, yeah. do, you remember the, do you remember the words? Oh, yeah. I used you to want sing to them every night for 15 years. Are you kidding I'm, me? I'm going to put you on the spot right now. Share with the listeners the uh, words because it's... It's a jumbo lite se te mo ya. Yeah, jumbo jumbo. Make the party all we go. Oh, jumbo lie. Jumbo lite se te mo ya. Hey, jumbo jumbo. That was it. See, man. Yeah, and smile. When I heard that, I... I lost it, man. And you guys, trust me, <laughs> Lionel's out on concert right now with Mariah Carey. So spend those ducats, man. Check out his show because it, it just only gets yeah, better and better show. and better. You know, and so, yeah. you know, with that, putting you on the spot itself, you know, I, you know, we're, again, do you see what I mean by how it's blown away? We got one minute left on segment number four and the segment number five. And I want to talk more about Peter Michael. I want to talk about the difference what it's like to be in the studio, to be live on stage or behind um, uh, in a studio uh, looping something for a show. And we'll get more in depth on that also. Kind of want to find out how that's like, because that is a different departure. You actually are stepping over into the dark side when you no longer become a musician and you become <laughs> somebody behind that board. So, and you, I guess you have to be a musician to get there anyway. So with that said, guys, <laughs> don't go anywhere. We're going to trail off on segment number four, going into number five of a two hour interview with this amazing guy called Peter Michael Escovito. Peter, thank you, my brother. I mean, this is, I'm having a blast, man. And you're going to find out that we could go another eight hours after this just to talk about <laughs> stuff. So, but uh, we're going to, we're going to get deeper into it. We're going to find out what Peter Michael likes in the way of comida for the gringos out there in the way of food. Everybody wants to know about one thing itself. Like Roddy Dangerfield said, eventually making love gets old, but we'll always be hungry. And so uh, we're going to, we're going to talk about, you know, there you go. Well, I didn't. I didn't. That was Mr. That was Mr. Roddy Dangerfield. So, with that said, guys, Jackie Bertoni, Jackie's Groove, Inner Talk Radio, Peter Michael Escovito, the third out of five, coming in to speaking of five, the fifth segment of a two-hour show. Guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You don't want to miss another word. Stay tuned. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. 
My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Welcome to Jackie's Groove. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. Everybody, welcome back to segment number five. Jackie Bertoni, that's me. Jackie's Groove is the station, and the people who bring it to you is called Intertalk Radio. And you guys, do yourselves a favor. Please go on to intertalkradio.com and look at the plethora of shows that we have on our roster. It's amazing, from gearheads all the way down to people with the, you know, the, with the light of God in their, in their heart. And uh, you definitely want to check it out. And I just want to take a couple seconds, if I may, just to thank the people that keep our lights on. And those are called our sponsors. And we want to start out with our biggest sponsor, which is Pitbull Audio. And that's Calvin Lee and the Motley crew over at PitbullAudio.com. But they just want you to play it loud. And then our good friends of mine at Optimal Body Personal Fitness, David Lyons and Kendra Lyons, who are keeping Jackie in shape and getting me back on my feet after this back surgery. And you can reach them at um, OptimalBodyPF.com. And our dear friends over, my newest uh, endorsement is with Blue Microphones. You can reach them at Blue Mike. That's B L U E. Hello, B L U E. Am I spelling blue correctly? M I C dot com. Uh, love the sound. Hopefully, I did them some justice there. And also to our good friends over at Drum Workshop, D W Drums dot com, and for their sponsorship and my dear friends who'll be giving me my wood sticks uh, for the last twenty two years. Vader Percussion, V A T E R dot com. And people that I'm most biased to, my percussion company going on 27 years, LP Music, the leader in the percussion world. And you can reach them at lpmusic.com. Love you guys. Jerry, uh, Terry, uh, Don Lombardi, John Good, Jerry Zacharias, and Derek. Love you guys. Thank you for the support. And also, too, Peter, you know, welcome your sister back to LP. I mean, it's, you know, it, it, it's been a minute, man. I mean, I'm just going to do some a promotion for her sister. I love, I've got her, Tim Bali's actually coming in, hopefully soon on UPS, and I'm going to try some with Tim Bali's. And that last song we heard, was that you? Or was that your sister playing Tim Bali's? Is that, was that was your dad? Or go ahead and talk about that. Uh, that was me. How come just because it sounds great, you, then you think it's Sheila? That was me, my brother. Well, I mean, you know, I have to, you know, I, I, I got to I gotta give props where props is due, man. I haven't had a chance to chop it up with you. I got a chance to play with your sister, play with uh, Giovanni Hildado, my Giovanni. God bless you, oh, brother. That's, guys, cool. that's another thing, man. Please go on to, um, you want to go on to uh, GoFundMe.com and, and search Correct. Giovanni Hildado. He, Gio is having some issues with his diabetes. Um, and uh, we need some money to take care of uh, these wonderful things called uh, health care, which our wonderful government does nothing about off my soapbox. So, um, but that said, you know, help another brother in need, man. And so with that said, those exactly. Timbali hits, those licks were by the sexy and lovely man who wears pumps better than his <laughs> sister does, Mr. Peter Michael Escobedo III. Peter, you know, you, you, we talked about something, and I want to bring this up too, and I, and I neglected to do so because I just happened to watch James Corden and a carpool karaoke, which he's famous for, but the first one ever with Mr. George Michael. Correct. And uh, tell the listeners out there uh, the longevity that you have with George and the time that you toured with George. How was that, man? Uh, it, that was a great uh, tour. Um, I loved, uh, I've always loved listening to uh, George and his songwriting and producing is one of my favorite to this day. He was a really, really good songwriter. 
but he was also a great producer uh, as well. And one of the highlights uh, of my career is when we did the uh, uh, Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me uh, mm. video with George Michael and Elton John. Uh, and that was, uh, that was really special. We did the, it was a music video we did. I think you can find it on YouTube. Uh, and that was really cool. George wasn't, um, wasn't the most outgoing, uh, while we were working, he was very business. Uh, so he would come on stage and really make sure everything was spot on and then kind of, kind of leave. So he wasn't as social as I would have liked him to be in the sense of just really hanging out with the band and, you know, I knew him and, and, you know, enjoyed his stuff and really enjoyed working with him. I would have loved to have just hung out with him more while we were touring. Uh, and I, I think that was the only thing that, that, uh, that maybe I didn't enjoy as much as, as not being able to spend the time as a whole unit together. And right. that and happens, that's... you know, some, some tours are like that. Some tours are more where everybody hangs out together. Some are more, you know, you, you, you go and you get the work done and that's fine because we're there to work, you know, but, uh, I loved the songs that we played. I love the production with George. And, and uh, again, he was a great performer, great singer. You know, and, and, it's, and you bring that part of it because, um, I heard on occasions from Carlos that George actually was, and Carlos Rios, once again, uh, our friend, mutual friend that was with uh, George Michael for a while also. Correct. And, um, the, um, I hear he was shy, more shy than anything at all, um, to a certain level. Because I ask a lot of the the uh, the players below the marquee, you and myself, when I mean that by um, not being George Michael or Lionel Richie and so on. And I always ask this question, you know, for people I don't know, but like you know, I've heard horror stories from our mutual friends who've been playing with the big leagues for a while, and where the person on top of that marquee really doesn't want anything to do with the band, which I think is absolutely horrible. It's ridiculous, right. man, because they, they they lost their roots, you know, from being road dogs and so on and so forth. You know, I always want to know that question. Hey, when you're on the road with said person, do they hang out with you? And I got to tell you, 99% of the time, man, yeah, they hang out. They right. eat, they sit back and they, you know, and they, and they shoot the shit because as I said over and over again, and pardon me for using uh, 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 the word shoot. See what I did there again? And uh, the, the the thing what we uh, we learned about is because, uh, Peter, you'll agree with me. There's nothing glamorous about touring. Nothing at all. You know, the fact of the matter is it's not until the lights go up because it's a lot of hurry up and wait. And especially, Peter will agree with me, as a percussionist, we are the last SOBs that get sound checked. It's always the drummer that spends 15 <laughs> minutes playing his damn toms and the snare and the, and the overheads. And with me, I can speak uh, for myself personally, Jackie, center conga, left, right conga. Okay. Timbales, bells, toys. Okay. We'll fix it in the mix. And I'm off <laughs> on stage and off in five minutes. So with that said, you know, let me ask you a question. We touched on this a little while ago and uh, George Michael, God bless you. I mean, the album older is one of my favorite songs, you know, uh, favorite albums. And uh, I just can never get enough of him, especially the fact is we all start realizing more things about when they're gone, you know, what we uh, what we miss about it, you know, and, and one of my favorite songs, it brings tears to my eyes, is a song by George Michael called Jesus to a Child. Uh, if you haven't mm-hmm. heard the song, guys, educate yourself. It's amazing. And and Peter, do me a favor and, and actually educate the listeners again. We've been in the business long enough. We, you know, things mm-hmm. we did yesteryear versus the things we do today to get ourselves pre- prepared for a gig. You know, we talked on the break itself, you know, your preferences of live playing in the studio or, you know, as a musical director and or, you know, someone behind that board that's making the music happen. Do you have a favorite out of all those? What do you what do you prefer? Do you like do you love the the immediate attention from the audience or is that gotten old to you at all? Um, I. I don't think it's gotten old to me. It it was as much as I enjoy being on stage and I'm, as much as I am comfortable there. And I think a lot of the comfort level has to do with uh, me being raised in it. Uh-huh. Uh, I've been raised on a stage. So, you know, I think the comfort level is very high. I, I can go on stage. It feels like I'm in my living room. I have, you know, the, the nervousness, what people call nerves, t- you know, to me, I get that excited feeling in of course. in my stomach and stuff before I go on. I hope I, I hope that never leaves. I, I like that and I need that and I want that before I go on stage. Having said all that, I'm, I'm not the guy who uh, wants to be the, the star. I don't want people uh, 
praising me and, oh, this was great and I can't, I don't, that adoration and stuff, that, that doesn't fuel me for, for whatever reason. Um, I love being behind the scenes. I love, uh, I'm an oil painter and, and a charcoal painter as well. So I, I'm an artist on that side. Right. So when I started moving into directing, to me, it served that same purpose of, of art of painting and being able to do it within a screen. But the behind the scenes portion of that, I really, really enjoyed. Uh, and I love working. I'm a workaholic. I love to work. I don't need necessarily to be in front or don't need somebody to tell me how great that was of what I did. Right. So having said that, you know, me moving into directing and creating TV shows and kind of being behind the scenes, I love it. Uh, I'm able to work. There was a time a while back ago that I was um, doing these big tours and I, I, was, I was on a Pepsi commercial. I was on a lot of things, a lot, a lot of these music videos. I was on a lot of stuff at the same time. Right. So I was getting noticed a lot and I kind of had to go shopping in the supermarkets like at two in the morning. Otherwise, I would get stopped a lot during regular yeah. hours and I didn't enjoy it at all. I, I didn't, I didn't like that part of it. I, I would just rather be a guy that people don't notice. So, um, so yeah, I, you know, I love the stage when you talk about what do I like more because I'm dipping in a lot of stuff. Um, uh, it, it's hard to say because whenever, whatever I'm doing, I love, but then whatever I miss because I'm still involved in it, I can go back to it. People always say, you know, could you stop playing music? And I always go, I guess. I mean, it's not that big a deal. Well, it's not that big a deal because as I'm directing and working and writing and editing all these t all these shows and these music videos and stuff, whenever I kind of miss it, I go play with Pops' band. I'll go play with Sheila. They call me every now and then to do stuff. So the reason I can kind of say yes, because I'm, I'm never really out of it. I'm always still in it. You know, when I'm playing music for a while, then, you know, Sheila call me, Hey, could you film this music video I'm doing? Yeah. You know, I'll come over yeah, and do so it. So I'm, yeah, I'm kind of in and out of everything. And so I like, I like the being able to step away from it. Uh, and it makes me want to go back. So I'm able to tap into all these different mediums. Uh, and I love television. Um, I love the tempo and the pace of television. It's a completely different occupation. Uh, than music. And even if you do music on television, it's a completely different animal. Um, and I, I love it. Uh, I got to uh, uh, 20 years ago, started doing uh, TV. And the second I stepped into it, I said, this is me. Again, you talked about touring. I never did like touring. It wasn't my favorite thing in the world. I liked seeing the world. That right. part was cool. Nothing, nothing else about the touring I, I liked. So, you know, to be able to be on TV... Be in Los Angeles, drive home, sleep in my own bed. Uh, that was it for me. Yeah. So. Yeah, because because I ask a lot of these. I was I was hanging out with my good buddy. I'm going to name drop Michael McDonald, and I said to Michael, I said, "Man, do you still love touring?" He says, "You know what, man? I love touring, but I hate traveling." You know, I said, "If we can all be like the I Dream of Genie, fold our arms and nod right. our head and be where we're at, that would be a great situation." Exactly. You know, um, but it doesn't happen. So you know, to reality's sake, it's uh, it's different out there, and it, and it's true because you know you think about things how God leads you to different situations, you know, and I'm speaking of myself personally because, you know, people have always said over the years, you know, if, even if Jackie couldn't play a lick of percussion, he's one of the funnest guys to hang out with and chop it up and so on. And then when Florentino Buenaventura from Intertalk Radio came to me and offered me my show, it was a no-brainer. I mean, I can talk to a rock right. outside and exactly. I can get information out of that. And then all of a sudden I find myself something that I always emulated. I always wanted to be on the radio. I always, you know, all my dear friends at Here's some old um, old uh, radio stations for you, especially up in the area. You remember the Quiet Storm, of course. And uh, and that's where I met Talia, and that's when Talia came down here. And then it used right. to be called Cute One Hundred and Two. Uh, they turned right. into the Wave, and uh, and so and when this came, like Talia said, it was a no brainer. You belong on the radio, and it's just fun right. to sit there and to you know to bring us into the forefront and educate people of what's going on out there. You know, and and and, and I'm thankful. Thank you, Lord, for this and. Uh, I'm really, right. really, really excited. You know, with all the hits that you've played on, think about this for a second. Where were mm -hmm. you? Were you driving? Were you walking? Were you in a supermarket? Where was the first time Peter Michael heard himself on the radio? If it's one of your own songs or a song that you recorded on with the star, 
Do you remember where that was and, and explain to us what you were feeling if, in fact, that happened? Uh, uh, oh, it definitely happened. I'm mm-hmm. trying to think. I, I would imagine because the first records I was doing that, that went straight to radio had to be Confunction. And that would have been in like 1981. Uh I don't remember hearing it for the first time, but to this day, and it's kind of funny, to this day, I can be somewhere and something's playing and I'll stop and I go, that sounds like me. Mm -hmm. And then I listen and then it takes me a while to remember what the song was or what the, and I go, no, I, that's, that's me. Hold on a second. I can hear those, those licks and, and, uh, and then I wait and then I, you know, then I'll find out. A couple minutes later, wait, I did that. That's right. I recorded, you know, so it's weird because I know every single thing that I do as well as, and again, this is going back to playing with somebody for so long, whether mm-hmm. it be Sheila or Juan or Pops, you know, we could play all together. And then 10 years later, that recording comes on and I go, that's Sheila on congas, that's Juan on bongos, Pops is playing timbales, I'm playing drums within about 10 seconds. Uh, I I can hear all the differences like right away. Um, Nuances, but you know, just just being able to to hear yourself on the radio or or you know, this is something you never thought would happen. So you know, it's the same with me growing up watching Johnny Carson. You know, my father was a huge fan of Johnny Carson, so I would see right. it. Never did I think I would ever be on the Tonight Show. That was that was not that was not reality for me. Um, I was a huge fan of, you know, the Jackson Five, the Osmond Brothers. Of course. Those were groups and people that I would see on TV when I was a kid. So when I when I was working with Donny Osmond, he would come in the in the rehearsal suit. Hey, Peter Michael, how you doing? Give him a hug. Hey, man, you know what do you think about this? And then I'd be working with him. Hey, man, look, let's just cut out the bridge. Just go straight. To, yeah, I think that'll work. So we're talking, and while we're working, I just kind of look over and go that. That's Donny Osmond. I mean, that's get- the real Donny Osmond. You know, it's just kind of, it's just weird. It's surreal because where you're, where you're growing up and what, what you think is reality, that's, it's not reality when you're looking on a TV screen. Absolutely. When you're growing up, that's not real. That's somewhere else in another planet. They record all this stuff. So you just never think you're going to be in these places. So, you know, this happens time and time again, whether I worked with, you know, I've worked with Stevie Wonder, I've uh, been musical director for him, done music videos with him. That's just weird. You know, it's, um, Marvin Gaye, it's, it's just, you know, you look for a second and it's not idolizing necessarily. It's just looking like this is weird that I'm in this place of, you know, with these people that I thought weren't even tangible. You know? Peter, hold and the thought for a second, brother boy. I'm going to interrupt you. We're coming out of the last um, after segment number five. I'm going to cut you off there. We're going to think about it where you left off. Guys, Peter Michael Escobedo, Jackie, we're telling Jackie to do talk radio. My God, last segment of two hours. It's blown by. I'm sure you agree with this, Peter. I want to pick this up um, on the last segment. We're going to talk about how to find Peter Michael, how to stalk him. So Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing. And it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video. Video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. 
Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio, to sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. Welcome to Jackie's Groove. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. I've got to go pick up this album, man, because my in-studio guest, Mr. Peter Michael Escobedo, has got me bobbing my head, man. i got to tell you, and i got to tell you right now, we're talking about nuances and knowing what we play and how we play it. You played a mean triangle on that tune, or was that programmed, Mr. Peter Michael Escobedo? <laughs> uh, yeah, I have to play all my own percussion, unfortunately. That's so, okay, yeah, that was me. So, wait a minute. So, you're saying you don't have the record yet? I wouldn't have done this whole show if I, if I knew you didn't go buy my record first. Did, did I? Did I not say that? I I I I could have swore it's here somewhere. I gotta. But let me just okay, tell you. Something. Yeah, that's better. Much better. But let me tell you right now. I am not going to ask Mr. Peter Michael Escovito for this copy because as soon as I sign off, I'm going onto iTunes and I will spend <laughs> the nine ninety nine, whatever it's going to get, because this has got to be in my repertoire. And you know. And with that said, you know, Peter Michael, let me just tell you something, brother. You brought up a, a, a great. Uh, Anecdote a little while ago about Donny Osmond. Um, my wife, who was a member of Donny Osmond's fan club, one of the biggest fan clubs in Los Angeles, she used to wear her oh, purple wow. socks. And so we got invited uh, to go see um, Donny um, during his Eyes Don't Lie tour. He did a um, he did a, uh, a TV broadcast with Byron Allen, the Byron Allen show that uh-huh. came on after Johnny Carson on NBC. And our dear friend, my also radio mate here, Terry Woolman, was the musical director at the time. Luis Conte was on percussion. Mark Hugenberger uh-huh. was on keys. The list goes down the line. And we met Donnie for the first time. So we were backstage in NBC, and I, Donnie walked in, and we shook hands, and we talked. We had mutual friends in the band. And I said, by the way, Donnie, this is my wife, Caprice. Caprice Donnie She's a big fan. And that's all I had to take because for the next hour, my wife and Donnie sat there and sang every song from the uh, from the hits of the Osmond brothers, you know, and, and, and which was blown away because Peter said in the last segment, it's amazing when you grow up listening to a certain song and the next thing you know, you're thrust into a room or in an arena or just in a private meeting with that person that you grew up with, the music that, you know, right. was basically the soundtrack of our lives. And, 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 and that's right. what I was talking about earlier. You know, we are all thankful, but I still get to the point where I'm sitting down and I'm with the guys from Earth, Wind & Fire or Tower Power, you know, Emilio Castillo, the founder of Tower Power. He's been my big brother, 10 years my senior. But when I'm around him, I'm still 19 years old. It's just that, right. you know, and, you know and, and, I'm, and I'm forever grateful for that. You know, but because I didn't come from right. a musical family. I came from a family who loved music, my mom being Armenian, my dad being Italian. But we grew up listening to cumbia, salsa, um, you know. Wow. Um, yeah, that's my, there wasn't a, a day that goes by that we didn't have – Bobby Goldsboro or Engelbert Humperdinck, but my mom and dad would have these Latin dance parties in which my duty was to sprinkle salt all over the floor of the garage and which would make everybody, um, when they would mumble and so on, to be able to slide and sashay across that. So that's how percussion came into my life because my mom never put sticks in my hands because she didn't want me to mar up the furniture. So she bought me my first pair of little multi-wood colored um, bongos with a little tax on the outside of it. I'm sure we all had those. And, yeah, uh, and that's where, that's where, that's how I started out, you know? And so, you know, 
envious of being not in the Escobedo family? Yeah, I would love to be able to sit there and chop it up and work out parts with family and then have sibling rivalry and yelling at each other and who's better and, hey, dad, this is that and the other and so on and so forth. But, you know, it doesn't matter how old you get. You're still going to be that way because I asked you in the last segment, was there envy between you and your sister? And and there's not because, you know, everybody's had their own accomplishments, you know, with the fact of that last song that your sister wrote for Prince, uh, The Girl Loves a Boy. You talk about Mm -hmm. bringing tears to my eyes, man. I mean, we have so many friends, my dear friend, and God bless John Blackwell on your recovery, my brother. One of the right, greatest, right, greatest funk drummers, you know, uh, and with Prince for years, you know, I had the um, I had the option and the opportunity to, uh, to, um, to interview him. But unfortunately, he took ill before we could do that. And then also I had a great interview with uh, Rhonda Smith. And so and we've uh-huh. also got coming up. We got coming up. Check this out, Peter. We've got coming up the revolution. Uh, our good friend of ours, oh, Rob cool. Bacon, yeah, is now the guitar player with Wendy and Lisa and the original members of that. So Florentino is going to come on that because he is a huge fan and he's going to be the one that's going to help me ask the pertinent question. So, and with that said, I just mentioned this man. His name is Florentino Buenaventura, the CEO and founder of Intertalk Radio. We have a little spiel that we do at the end of the uh, segment, Peter. He comes on. I can get a chance to stretch my bones. And uh, you guys are going to talk about a little about business. So with that said, Peter, say hi to Florentino and Florentino. So how did Mr. Escovito to you? Who is My this brother. Peter Michael Escovito? <laughs> hey, brother, how you doing, man? <laughs> Good, man. How are you? I'm I'm great, dude. I'm I, like I said earlier in the breaks, where I uh, hijacked the airways from from Jackie for a second. Uh, I'm really loving this interview, guys. You guys, uh, oh man, you know, it's fun. It's in fun, fact, man. It's, it's, it's just nice chopping it up. Just always talking about uh, you know the olden days, all the stuff that we've done, and uh, yeah. it's 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 good for people, especially for a lot of young musicians, to kind of just get a sense and, you know, get a little foundation of, of, uh, right. of, you know, how to, how to navigate through this, uh, art form. You know, so. Yeah, exactly. In fact, uh, I was chatting with some of the, uh, the folks out there. I want to give a shout out to Cindy, who is a huge fan of yours, Jackie. I know you interact with her as well, but she's, she's really loving this interview. And uh, she was, uh, making comments on the, uh, you know, on her Facebook and chats. And I, you know, I get those and I try to respond to people as, as the shows go, go along. Cause we're, you know, we're, you know, we're making some big roads within the music business, but we're just, you know, we're just a, you know, a, a, a simple company of a handful of people who just are really passionate about the players who have made a difference in this business. In fact, all players make a difference because the fact that Absolutely. if you play music, uh, you're making a difference in this world. And, right. and uh, you know, we, we do a lot of partnerships with schools. We're, we're working with Berkeley College of Music, uh, the the great group of uh, musicians club over at UCSD. Uh, we've done stuff with musicians Institute and, you know, we're hopefully we'll, we'll at some point move to the, uh, the, uh, the younger, you know, junior highs and high schools and all that fun stuff. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's important to, for them to, to understand about, about careers in this business. And I, you know, that's one of the things that's always impressed me about you, Peter Michael is that, uh, you have such a, 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 a storied career in this, in this business. I mean, you've done it all. You've been a music director and that's not usually a, you know, the common thing you'd find from a percussionist. That's not uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, usually you'll see a, you know, guitar player or a keyboard player and then, but the percussionist, that's a, that's, mm-hmm. that's you know, quite a, quite a call. And then of course, you know, uh, being, uh, you know, uh, you know, a director, producer television movies uh, are you, you saying we're not capable to do things because we're percussionists <laughs> <laughs> Pre- and don't bring up a problem with the bass player now don't let me start with that stuff. hey 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 now bass players you know all all songs should have nothing but bass no, i'm just joking um but uh, anyway my my as i continue to compliment my brother here my both my brothers actually um you know i just really appreciate it and in fact uh you know the, the main thing of this segment is we want people to know how they can find out more about you obviously you've got a wikipedia page but uh what are some of the other things that they can do to, to learn more about Peter Michael? Uh, I think really the main thing, you know, in today's world, uh, you know, there, there's, you know, most people go to uh, Facebook or they go to YouTube sites or YouTube channels or, or, or even kind of <clears throat> even more than Googling, almost like uh, searching within YouTube uh, of videos and, and uh, concerts uh, I think as as YouTube has just grown, as well as Facebook, but with, with YouTube, I can go on, you know, every month I think there's something else, you know, that uh, that I've done from over the years that somebody has learned how to upload. 
you know, <laughs> yeah. that has been from 1970 something, 1980 something, 1990. You know, it's just all these, all these tours and all these shows and all these performances, and they're out there. And a lot of a lot of these people have videotaped them, and and just you know, every now and then they'll get around. To, oh, I should upload this, and all of a sudden it's like, wow, you know, I don't remember this. I was on uh, YouTube and I pulled up, um, I think Pops in 1972 playing with Santana in Australia at an outdoor concert. And I'm sitting there watching pops take this solo that I, I didn't even remember he was in Australia, let alone thinking I would ever see him playing there in 1972. And it was, it's just amazing that all this product and all this stuff is out there and people are, you know, the information because of technology, it's getting easier to be able to get access to all this stuff. So to learn about me, to learn about Pops, to learn about the family, Sheila Wan, you know, you, Facebook and YouTube and everything else. I think there's just a lot of people. We have so many, so many fans and so many uh, uh, people that support the the family. And it's just been a, a, a wonderful blessing, a wonderful ride. And we just appreciate, uh, the, you know, so many people. It's amazing to me that somebody would, would even care about, uh, you know, what I'm doing or what the family's doing. And it's just so many people that just, man, thank you for letting me see this or for answering this. And it's like, wow, it's a trip. You know, we have a lot of support out there. So we're just very thankful. And, and we thank God that we are, we are a family that, that loves God first. Uh, we love each other. Uh, we've been in an industry that's a crazy business and through all the ups and downs, and we've had craziness happen in our lives. But right. we've managed to stay with love first and then um, also be a support to each other. And all of us right now today are healthy, and that's just such a blessing. Pops is 82 years old. He's doing great. Mom's is going to turn 80, and, and they're both healthy. They're both doing well. Awesome, so, awesome. so it's all good, man. It's, a, it's just a wonderful, wonderful experience. Yeah, I wish I wish people would have got a chance to experience Peter Michael like I did. I did. I seen you. I, we talked about it uh, on the interview that we had a long time ago. But uh, uh, I, I, Jack, you didn't know this. I was at I was in high school and Confunction played to play came to play our high school, and that was really? when Peter Michael was in in, in the band and uh, didn't you know you don't know who players are at that that age. You're just like wow, these guys are so amazing. But uh, you, you remember? I think you you remembered playing that that gig at Kennedy High School in Sacramento. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. yeah, and thank thank you so much for reminding me that I'm a lot older than you. I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> you were you were a kid too, man. What are you talking about, brother? You no, were just, I was. You were I just was. a baby up there. I, that part of it I remember because I you know I kind of followed you later on through you know all the time when you were playing with Prince and and you know being on uh, what was that uh, oh the movie with uh, uh, Run DMC. Weren't you? You were in that one, oh, right? With Sheila? No, I wasn't in that. That my brother Juan was in it. And okay. Sheila was in it. Uh, Crush Groove. Crush Groove. Okay. Crush Groove. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. But uh, yeah. so so funny. You know, just uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, career. and it's funny that you mentioned that thing about being old. I'm older than all of you guys right here. But from Peter Michael, only one year older. So you have to show me a little bit of respect. But you know, growing <laughs> up in high school, we had a band uh, that play used to play on our Friday nights. And the group was called Van Halen. Oh and, yeah. You know, and, wow. and this is you know, yeah, this is the wow factor when you knowing that. You know, all these years later, we're still friends, you know, and, you know, and, and stay right. on the line here uh, with me, uh, Florentino, because, you know, I, I I love my three, my three words. You know, I always say, you know, peace through music is how I stop my or end my conversations. I always say to all the young people out there about the record business or the lack thereof, stop stealing music. And in this case, about being thankful, you know, my favorite line here is God is great. You know, we yeah. have to be thankful every day we wake up, man. You know, and, 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 and like I just told Peter Michael, you know, the whole fact of the matter is he accused me of, uh, and blatantly accused me of not having his album called Moments. And, uh, you know, and so while, while Florentino was helping promote and how to get a hold of Peter Michael, I went ahead and I went to the small thing called, um, called uh, Apple Music. And I, uh, just to show you that I'm, I'm an honest man here, Peter. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. Come on now. Okay. I just spent $9.90 on a song that I'm going to wear out. And uh, so, kid, oh, there yeah. it goes right See, there. Don't steal now, music. Now, now I get to go to Panda Express today. And, and <laughs> there you go. Get there. The, the chow mein and the rice. There you, there you go, man. There you go, you know, man. 
<laughs> and you know, and so Tina, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you to leave because you've overstayed your welcome. Oh, that's see, and, uh, that's how you and, are. <laughs> well, you know, it's just about about a bass wow. player. It's all about that. No, I, oh, okay, it's, it's, it's percussion about. time. I get it. I get that's it. it. That's hey, it. brother. Hey, we'll, we'll talk later on offline about some of the fun stuff that we were chatting before. Peter, Michael, cool. Jackie, have a great rest of your interview. Thank my you, my brother. brother. Love Thank you, man. You. Love you, too, talk bro. to you soon. All right, bye. Hey, Peter, Michael. You know, and trust me, Florentino is my brother. I take a bullet for him. You know, and uh, <laughs> of course, okay, I lied. You know, I, I try to jump away from it, but I, I would just give my best effort. So, you know, you know, with that said, you know, in the last three minutes, I, I don't want to get political because that's not my vibe at all. But, you know, we talked about the fact is, you know, I always say this. I miss my Tower Records or my Virgin Records or whatever it may be, the release Tuesdays of new releases, just to go in there and shuffle through the bins, um, going back to my age, but, you know, from albums, kids, those are the big square 33s. And then it got to the uh, the CDs and the big CD boxes down to this. Right. Just to see this, just to see this, the the CDs that I was on. Even though I didn't sit there and say, "Hey, by the way, I'm on this album," because you know the less people you tell, the less hassles you have to worry about. And I miss that, you know. And, the, and don't understand. I understand the value of music in Japan, where there's still 38 tower record stores that are thriving. You know, right. it's a, and it's a different business. You know, Dave Grohl said um, that he firmly believes in the next four years, because he said it a year ago that there will be record stores again. I don't, you know, I'd love to believe that it is all going to come around again, but let me ask you a person that's, uh, that's old like I am and you've been through the trenches and we'll continue to, you know, to muddle through them and, and to thrive, but share with us in the last uh, minute and a half here, the music business or the lack of, do you get what's going on? Are you afraid? Are you optimistic or pessimistic about it? Um, I am one who has definitely come up from, you know, cassettes and records and the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I love the process. I'm also one who continues to to learn uh, uh, about all the newest technology, about all the new cameras that we film with, about all the new platforms that are coming out digitally and all this stuff. I, to me, it's changing and it's, you know, some things go away that you miss, other things you get opportunities for. It's right. just changing. I don't think it's better or worse. I, I, I think it's just changing. And, and, you know, yeah, I miss things. And also at the same time, look at what we have access to. It's, it's mm-hmm. ridiculous. I mean, there's things that we can watch right now that we might have not have been able to even imagine seeing in our lifetime, let alone right. not being able to pay for it to, to experience it. Now we get it for mm-hmm. free. I mean, you can look online and watch stuff. We can watch, you know, for all the old school people, you could, if you wanted a drum lesson, Go to the store, buy a DVD that costs two hundred and fifty dollars for your main guy, and you could watch that. Now you can watch it free all day long from all your favorite drummers. So, you know, to think that one day we'll be able to hologram, you know, you you miss Prince, one day you'll be able to hologram him in your own living room. You'll be able to go to a theater. That theater is going to end up being, you know, interactive hologrammed within inside the theater. I mean, there's imagine where it's going. Yeah. You're losing one thing, but you're transitioning somewhere else. So I look forward to all the stuff that's coming. It's we're in a weird transition stage right now. Peter, we're, uh, I'm going to interrupt you, brother, because where it's going is going down to the last couple seconds, guys. I hate to cut you off, Peter. I love you, brother. Thank you so much. I apologize for radio. Um, everybody, Peter Michael Escovito, the third, check him out. Jackie Bertone, Jackie's Groove, Inner Talk Radio Network. I will have Pops Escovito on the show real soon. Yes. We'll bring it up. Love you guys. Peace through music. Stay healthy. God bless. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to timdolbear.com and check out our free one-song mix offer. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. 
I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on InterTalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio, to sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com.